Okay, we're going to go through a basic uh, introduction of Arcam Express. We're going to uh, focus on uh, one of the uh, features of the software that's quite unique is its ability to import bitmap images, convert them into vectors that uh, we can create toolpath with. So we're going to start by opening a model. So I click on Open Model, and you'll see that in the uh, directory that we have here, we have this bulldog. So we're going to open up the bulldog. And as you can see, the bulldog is uh, opening up. It's showing us the, um, uh, the DPI or dots per inch of this particular image. Uh, so we want to uh, convert this by very clicking, uh, clicking on Scan DPI and then back to Image Size. We're going to convert this into inches. So the image actual size is about 1.6 by 1.5 inches. And uh, we're going to click OK. So you can see we have the bulldog in the middle of our screen. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to convert that bitmap image, which is what it currently is. It's a JPEG, actually. Uh, but it could be a PNG file, it could be a BMP file, a TIFF file, a GIF file. All of those can be used in the software. We're going to convert that from bitmap to vector. You can see up here in the uh, uh, top uh, of the uh, tools here, we have a tool called bitmap to vector. So we're going to click on that. You can see the first option that it gives us, or the first uh, thing we want to do is try to reduce the number of colors. So currently you can see there are several different colors here. We want to reduce that down to the lowest number of colors that we can get without losing the detail in the image. So I'm going to click on reduce colors. You can see here it's showing us that there are 255 different colors or shades in this particular image. We want to reduce it from 255 down to the lowest number that we possibly can. So by using the slide bar on the tool, as I begin sliding it from right to left, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen it's starting to drop out some of the colors. Essentially what it's doing is it's combining common colors and reducing them down um, it, it, to the lowest number that we can. And I'm going to bring it down all the way to two. You can see as I get down to two colors, even though I've lost all the color in the image, I've not lost any of the detail. All of the um, the features of the of the bulldog's face are still there. The cross that is hanging from his collar is still there. So we're going to click OK. And so we've reduced it down to two colors. And the last thing we want to do is just create the vectors. Now, there are two um, settings in the bitmap to vector called speckle size and smoothness. I'm not going to change those, but essentially what they are, speckle size is like a pixel filter. So if there's small bits of pixelation in this uh, image that are sort of dangling, it'll automatically delete those. Um, if I set that setting higher, then it would delete uh, larger uh, bitmaps or larger uh, pixels. Um, I, mean, I did generally leave it set at two. The smoothness, basically, what it's going to do is where you've got the jagged edges in a bitmap. If I can zoom in, you'll see that the bitmap is very jagged along the edges. Uh, if I set this number very, very high, say at a thousand, what will happen is that the software will try to stay along these lines, so it will create very jagged edges. Uh, which is not desirable when we're trying to machine. If I set it very, very low, uh, it will smooth everything off, but where I want to have some, maybe some sharp corners, it's going to lose those as well. And again, by default, the 75 setting that is in the software tends to be quite, uh, quite a good setting. So I'm going to click on Create Vectors. What you may notice is that it's, it's created vector lines around the image. If I reduce the contrast on the bitmap, you can really see it. So you can see where it's smoothed off the lines created nice smooth machinable lines that will create a good toolpath for us when we go to create that. So we can close this tool now and we'll zoom back out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the entire image. Now you'll notice that each of these vectors are now independent of each other. So if I want, I can delete any portion of this that I'm not too happy with or, or, or don't like. For example, I've got this border around the outside edge which I don't want. I'll just very simply right click and delete that. So I'm going to grab this entire bulldog I'm going to right click and copy and I'm going to close down this session because essentially we're done uh, with the Bulldog. We've already converted it from bitmap to vector so I'm going to close this session. The reason I'm closing the session is because right now that image was created in a, a size that's far too small and I can scale the size of it but it will always stay proportionately the same. It will maintain the aspect ratio. But by creating a new model, I can establish my material size to any size that I want, and I'm not limited to um, maintaining the aspect ratio. If I wanted, I could make this uh, width uh, 12 inches and the height 24 inches if I wanted. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually use a material size of 12 by 12, material thickness of 3 quarters. I'm setting my origin position in the bottom left corner. I'm going to set my material Z0 at the top of the block, so it's 
Uh, we're, when we touch off the tool on the machine, we're going to touch off the top of the material as our reference point. And model position is not relevant at this point because we're not using a 3D model. It only relates in our CAM if we're using a 3D model and we're not for this particular project. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see there's our material size. We set our origin position in the bottom left corner and so you can see that the 00, zero coordinates um, go to the bottom left corner. Very simply going to right click and paste. You can see our bulldog's in the corner, but he's very small. One of the beautiful things about converting this from bitmap to vector and then rescaling the size is that once it's a vector, it doesn't lose resolution or it doesn't become pixelated as you change its size. If you did this before, if you did it while it was still a bitmap, that would happen, but now it won't. So we're going to use this tool called Transform. And the Transform tool allows us to change the size of this bulldog. So I'm going to change the width to, say, 7 inches. You can see that I've maintained the aspect ratio here so it automatically changed the height. Click Apply. I'll click up here to center the model in the middle of our material. You can see that we've now created the Bulldog and he's scaled to the size of our material. The next step for us is to create a tool path for this. So I'm once again going to grab the entire Bulldog. And up here in the project pane you can see it says Tool Paths. We're going to click on Tool Paths. And that opens up all of the operations down here in the lower section. So anytime I click on something in the project pane, it opens up those operations in the lower section. So under toolpaths, there are several different toolpathing strategies. The one I'm going to use here is a VBIT carving toolpath. The reason I use a VBIT carving toolpath is it's the only toolpath that allows the tool to actually reproduce the geometry that it sees. And let me just explain that. I'm going to zoom in on a corner of our bulldog here. So if you can see right here in this corner, um, we've got a fairly sharp corner. It's not a perfect corner, but it's fairly sharp. Uh, if I was using any other tool pathing strategy, and I'm using a round tool, and that really doesn't matter if I'm using a V-bit, an end mill, a ball nose cutter, all tools are round tools. So if that was the diameter of my tool, if I was going to create a machining tool path using a round tool, the closest I could expect to get into the corner might be somewhere around maybe there. So what would happen is that this corner would be rounded off. I wouldn't have this sharp corner. And if I used a profile tool path, a, a, an area clearance tool path, which are both strategies that I can use in ArtCam, I would not be able to get the exact geometry of this. So those are not good strategies for me to use. I'm going to delete this circle again. With a VBIT carving tool path, what, will, what, this, what the software will do is it will recognize this geometry and the tool essentially will swoop out of the material when it skips to the corner and then swoop back in again and it creates exactly the geometry that we want. So I'm going to click on Create a V-Bit Carving Toolpath. Let's just zoom back out so we can see what we're doing here. So you can see in the toolpath I just basically answer the questions. Um, the vector association is selected vectors so I'm going to select the vectors that I want to create the toolpath with. My start depth will be zero, in other words the top of my material because that's where we established our start point when we set up our job dimensions. And I have the ability to limit the maximum tool depth. And I'm going to do that here because what will happen if I don't is that areas where there's a, a wide gap between the vectors, it will tend to machine down quite deep. And sometimes that's not desirable, both from a machining perspective in terms of time, as well as sometimes it just looks a bit odd when you've got these areas machined very deeply. So we're going to set the maximum depth at an eighth of an inch. In other words, at an eighth of an inch, the tool is basically going to level off the material. Our tolerance is set at a, th a thousandth of an inch. Essentially all the tolerance means is that where the tool is creating radiuses, it's not going to move away from those lines more than a thousandth of an inch. So if you can look in here where it comes into this corner, it's going to stay tight to those lines within a thousandth of an inch. So it's going to give you nice smooth machining lines. If I set this number very, very high at say maybe a tenth of an inch, then where you see radiuses, they wouldn't look like radiuses. They'd be very choppy as the tool would kind of make jagged edges because it would be allowed to move away from that line along a lot further than we're allowing it to here. So we've set our tolerance at a thousandth of an inch, a maximum depth is set, set at 0.125, and now we're going to select the tool that we want to choose. So I click on the tool selection, and here's our tool library, and you can see in the V-carving section there are several different tools that we can choose from. The tool we're going to choose is a small V-bit, 90 degrees. We're going to click select, and we're going to calculate. And you can see that it where it's darkened up, it's actually created the tool path. So we can see where the tool is actually going to machine, but we can't really see at this point what exactly this image is going to look like. So let's close this, uh, this window. 
One of the functions that RCAM gives us is the ability to simulate a toolpath. So if I click on simulation, you can see that it creates the toolpath for me. And if I zoom in and I rotate my part, you can see that it's created the bulldog and it's machined it to a maximum depth of an eighth of an inch. And it's created all of the geometry. So where you had those sharp corners, for example, on the, on the nose here of the bulldog, you can see that it's created those nice sharp corners for us. A couple of other features the software has. If I click on simulation, uh, you can see down here again, as I click on something at the top, all of those functions open at the bottom. I can change the material, for example, if I wanted to see what this image might look like in a piece of light oak. I can have a look and see what it's going to look like in a piece of light oak. And in fact, if I want, I can actually select a color. If I click on depth of color, if I wanted to perhaps paint this image black, I can click on apply and you can see that I've changed the image so that it shows me what it would look like if it was machined in oak and it was painted in black. So we've created the toolpath. The last step for us is to save the toolpath. So again, we click on toolpaths at the top. And the first uh, icon here in the toolpath section is called save toolpath. So we're going to click on that. So you can see that we've got one toolpath listed here, which is there's only one in this particular project. Uh, we, you see where it's going to save it, I click on Browse to change this location, which I'm going to do. I'm going to actually change this. Uh, for now, I'll just put it on the desktop. Click Open, open. and we will change the name to uh, Bulldog. And we'll open that. So you can see we're now saving it to the desktop. The name of the file is going to be Bulldog. The last thing we need to change is the machine file format. Now, machine file format is much like a print driver. It has to match our machine. In our particular case, with the, uh, the General Junior machine that we're going to be using today, if I scroll down here to the Mach 3 section, because our controller is called Mach 3, uh, the, the toolpath thing, or the uh, post presser that I'm going to use is going to be called Mach 3 GB Arcsinch ATC, which sounds like a very confusing name. Basically, Mach 3. Uh, it's going to recognize any of the arcs that we've created, so it'll give us nice smooth radiuses. It's going to be in inch units, and ATC stands for Auto Tool Change. Now, in this case, we're only using one tool. However, we may do a project where we're using several tools. What the ATC function does in this post is it will pick up those uh, changes and alert us that we need to change tools between each operation. So we're going to click on Save, and we've now saved that uh, toolpath. The last step for us will be to just copy that file to a thumb drive and then it will be ready for uh, the machine. We can then plug the thumb drive into the machine and start machining.